white tee, yeah. Call up Mike Williams for the hype, please. They gon' wipe you before you wipe me. I'm boxes of checks, not my Nikes. So recently on Instagram, I've been making some carousel posts that I've been intertwining both film, regular photography, and also video into one continuous carousel post. Now I know we've all seen the carousel posts with sort of collages that have been split into different sections, but in today's video, I wanna show you my process for integrating video inside these carousel posts to make them intertwine with your photos with other elements that you can create really interesting and intricate collages that you can then cut up into different sections for your carousel post and make like one continuous really cool collage that's got both video, photos. It's not a hard technique, but it does take a little bit of planning, a little bit of forethought. Is forethought a word? No, yeah, that was right, okay. It's gonna take a little bit of forethought, which means you're gonna have to plan out how these video elements are gonna interact with your negative space. Um, let me just hop into it. We're gonna use Photoshop and Premiere Pro today. So basically in today's video, I'm gonna show you how I created this carousel post for a project I did with G-Star Raw and Super 73. Um, essentially it's, I think it was like six or seven, maybe eight. Eight images or eight cutouts of a long collage post that I created with different video elements intertwined. So right now you can see that I have some kind of like fake film borders along with interactive elements with this Portra 400 film box kind of protruding out with a, little, with a little bit of shadow. And then obviously we have four different video elements here. We have these four boxes that are behind certain elements to make it look a little bit more like it was actually built into the collage. And then this technique is applied throughout this collage. For this specific element, there's an additional step which I'll go over, so yeah. Let me show you exactly how to make this. So first off, let's head into Photoshop. So in Photoshop, I already have this whole collage built out and this is kind of just what I made. Let me just zoom in for you here. I have guides on. And so the guides, essentially what I do is when I go into canvas size, before I create my collage, I'll kind of think about how many slides I want. This one, I want kind of a square aspect ratio and I wanted eight slides. So what I did is I went and made it a thousand pixels high and then multiply that. You can actually do a thousand times eight, press enter and that'll create kind of the width that you want. Another cool tip is that once you've created your base canvas, you can actually create these guides. So what you do is you go to view, new guide layout, select, let's, for this one's eight press OK and it automatically split your entire collage into the appropriate sizing and width for each cutout. Just to give you a breakdown, this is a bunch of different elements here. I have some drawing, which I did with a pencil tool. I have different elements like this portrait box, which I took a picture of and then just kind of cut it out and scanned it. I have this shadow, which is another element that I added in. This is all just done, done Photoshop, just had fun with it. The main key thing here is as you're creating your collage, what essentially happens is I'm creating negative space in areas that I think that the video will end up going into. So for instance, in this first cutout here, I'm planning to put up videos in one, two, three, four selections. So I'm leaving these blank in the actual Photoshop document. This is applicable throughout the entire collage. Every area that I want video in, I'm leaving blank. So we've got one here, got a little bit here, a little bit here. The only issue is that when you have items or elements that you want blending modes on, there's an additional step that you have to do. So let's say for instance, I have right here, I have this tape that I want to include in my collage. Now, right now, if I were to just include this into, you see how like when I don't have a blending mode on, this is how it looks. And then when I do have a blending mode on, it screens on top of, this is how I want it to look, but on the actual blank, it doesn't do the blending mode because there's nothing for it to blend into. What you actually have to do is you have to create a separate document with all of your items that you want blending modes on separately. I'll touch on that a little bit later, but real quickly, okay. So we have all of our sections of our carousel neatly laid out. The next step is that you have to crop out each partition of your carousel. So what this means is that for my first photo, I'm gonna crop according to the guidelines enter and I already have this saved as a separate document. What I do is I save this, I save each of these partitions as separate documents. So now I have in this one, I have my first thing here and I'm going to save this as a PSD document. 
So you do this for each one. This is the first one. This, as I said, is the second one. And then remember how we had tape over the second partition? Remember how I had tape right here? What you do is you save one with just the regular carousel cutout and then your tape, what you're gonna do is you're gonna save that separately. So you'll have that and you'll have this saved separately. And I'll show you why in a little bit. So go ahead, save all of your items. Good to go separately. You'll save each one and not including the tape you should have about, for this one I'll obviously have eight different cutouts. So once you have your PSD cutouts, what you're gonna go do next is go into Premiere Pro. Okay, so once you're in Premiere Pro, the first step obviously is to drag in and create a new project file. And so the first thing you're gonna drag in is the actual, the PSD file that you saved. So once you drag in the PSD file, this is key, don't save it as a JPEG, don't save it as a PNG because you'll lose quality. Just drag in your PSD file directly into the project and this is how it's gonna come out. And clearly you have four blank sections now. Now you can go ahead and include video and you can kind of crop the video however you want. What I do is I often just drag in video and then I'll put a little crop video effect onto it, crop it how I like, and I'll do that for each one. So that's one, that's two on the very top there, three, and then four. One thing I like to do, a little extra tidbit here, so obviously I'm playing it through here. I like to loop these so that it doesn't seem weird playing over and over again. So all I do to loop it is I'll just have it here. I'll duplicate it. Let me just delete this so I'll show you. I'll have my clip. I'll cut it to around halfway of whatever my total length is. I'll duplicate it by holding down option and dragging. Speed duration, reverse speed, and that's how you duplicate it right there. Now when you're watching this, I'll go ahead and add some, some music at the bottom here. Um, and then that's that's the first post of your eight post series collage. This, this is the easy part. Another technique that you'll often do here is... Okay, so the other part is talking about the tape element. The one that you had the blending mode on in the very beginning. This goes a little bit differently. You know how we saved the original sort of cutout without the tape, and then we saved the tape separately. This is where this plays into the entire collage. So real quickly, we have the number two PSD, the second slide of your carousel saved. I've also saved my tape. Same dimensions, everything, but I've just saved it separately on its own PSD layer. Now, when I have the base, and I drag the PSD layer on top, I can now apply a blending mode. And then when you input your video or whatever into the background, now when you play through it, it blends with the video and not just the actual element. And you'll have these like weird like black areas. This is with the tape, without the tape, with the tape, and you can include different interactive elements I mean, if you really wanted to, you could even like change the location of this and you can make it really interactive or how interactive you want it to be. Okay, once you have all eight sections of your entire carousel ready to go, what you're gonna do is you're gonna go to File, Export Media, say this is an H.264 file, and then the key here is just going to your your bitrate settings, make sure it's VBR one pass and do that maximum bitrate. So for me, I just max it out at 50, export that to your desktop or wherever you want to save it to. And then now you have, you'll have eight video files. You'll take those eight video files, you put it into Instagram, just select whatever order that you had it planned out and you can go ahead and upload your carousel post. So yeah, if there were any parts of that that didn't make sense or you want me to kind of go over in more detail, please let me know in the comments below. You can make it as complicated or as simple as you'd like in Photoshop. It's really about just getting different elements, designing it how you want, making sure that you plan out for where the negative space will be, where your videos will go. And then on top of that, if you wanna add a little other elements with blending modes, save that separately. Just to go re recap, have that separate, put that back over on top of your files in Premiere Pro when you're ready. And then finally just export it as a uh, eight, 
separate partitions in my case you can do this with two three or even just one and there you go that that's that'll be your video plus photo plus other elements collage post for instagram and you can do a lot of cool things with this technique if you like this video please like it subscribe turn on post notifications all that jazz it really does help the channel appreciate your time and i'll see you guys in the next one